secure passwords, how to make them and how to remember them. This is a subject that's kind of near and dear to my heart. I feel that most people, unfortunately, myself included, don't use secure passwords. This is something that as time goes on probably won't be that much of an issue as we get into things like uh, biometric authentication, like the, the fingerprint scanner on the new iPhone, or two-factor authentication that I believe uh, Facebook and a few other places now offer. Secure passwords will be less of an issue, but it will still be important. So let's go ahead and look into how to make them and how to remember them. So what is a secure password? Well, let's ask Randall Monroe. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the webcomic XKCD. Uh, it's pretty funny. They do a lot of geek stuff, a lot of nerd stuff, and most of it's based on, actually almost all of it is based on solid science. Um, it's not necessarily family friendly. The guy uses uh, some colorful language and such at times. But this is actually a, a pretty good indicator of passwords. This password, Troubadour and 3, is sort of what we think of when we think of a secure password. It's mixed case, it uses special characters, it uses numbers and punctuation. Um, but it's really hard to remember. Like you, you just like he says here, um, you know, was it trombone, troubadour, was it a zero, was it an O? It's not the easiest thing in the world. Now, unfortunately, this isn't that hard to crack. Uh, these are common substitutions, you know, using a zero for an O, a four for an A. These aren't that hard. Adding punctuation, it's not that much different from adding an alphanumeric character. It, there's what's called a degree of entropy. It's sort of how long it's going to take that particular character to be deciphered by a computer. Now, honestly, no matter what you do, if you add more, it gets harder. So if you have something like this, it's just sort of four random common words correct horse battery staple that's much harder than this and this is pretty easy to remember you've probably already memorized it it's easy because you can picture something like this you can picture a horse saying you know that's a battery staple correct it's a correct horse battery staple I mean it's easy to remember not all of them are gonna be this way but this is a good example of a way to come up with a password so I want to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, special characters and cases. S passwords like this, Catman7, typically what's recommended. Mixed case, special characters, punctuation, alphanumeric. This isn't that this isn't that hard to remember, but this isn't very secure. It's only seven characters. Um, honestly, the addition of mixed case, it's upper and lower case, and numbers doesn't really make it that much more difficult. Computers are fast, and they're getting faster. So something like this, this is two common words with normal substitutions with a number at the end. This isn't that uncommon. Uh, there have been papers that have shown usually it's a one at the end. Seven was the least used, so this would be more secure as far as these passwords go, but still, this is gonna take a matter of hours to break. One of the other problems is humans are predictable. The words and phrases that we use fit into a common pattern and are distributed pretty normally. So when a computer goes to attack a password, it uses a set of common phrases and usually it can break a password pretty fast because of that. So that's what's called a dictionary attack and that's how this happens is say, you know, there's a certain collection of words and phrases that are common passwords. The movie Hackers touches on this and does a pretty good job of it. What is it? I believe it was love, sex, power, and God, I believe, were the four po most common passwords. Those aren't really true anymore because most places have a character limit where they have to be longer than that. But even still, there are known lists of the most common passwords. So when a uh, hacker is trying to break into an account, that's what they have their programs do first. And then it has a list of other words. It's a dictionary. That's why it's called a dictionary attack. You end up getting lists of words sort of like this where you just have word after word and you plug those in and you you know you try that and if that doesn't work you move on to the next one and in addition to this say you take hippo you plug that in and you try h i p p o then you try capital h i capital capital h hippo capital h i hippo capital h one hippo like that and move on and for humans that takes a while to type in for a computer that's less than a second so you try that and then you start trying combinations and that's when it starts getting harder and harder and harder. 
so brute force and that the dictionary attack is also a brute force attack but typically what brute force means is rather than try a bunch of characters you know what your minimum character length is say it's eight i think is a common one you try four a's then you try seven a's and a b then you try seven a's and a c and you just do that until you have the password broken again for a human that takes a really long time for a computer that takes anywhere from hours to a few days so you have typical combinations, something like, I like animals and a number. That's a known quantity. That's a known grammatical phrase. It's like, I like cats. I like pangolins. I like penguins. Seven, you know, that's, that's not an uncommon phrase. And so that's something else that's commonly used. So knowing this makes guessing easier because there's sort of a predefined set of things that it might be. So then we come to passphrases. These are more characters so they make the passwords stronger uh, less grammar makes them stronger too so rather than I like cats or I like pangolins 9 it's not that secure because it's a common phrase it's something you and I might actually say now pangolins hover over tape nobody's ever gonna say that well I just did and you might be saying it too but in a normal case of conversation nobody's ever gonna say that so that makes it harder to guess because the number of words that could be combined in this way to make a four-word phrase is almost infinite. It's countably infinite, but it's pretty close to infinite. So by combining these words, like you could do, I don't know, dog, watch, glass, computer. You know, that doesn't mean anything, but you can come up with a phrase that's memorable and it's secure because this, just by the nature of it being however many characters it is, makes it hard to guess. So here's some more example of some passphrases. Giant squid juggle cake, fuzzy flying fish faces, nine Oscars peeled quartz, one nine nine eight one three. This is one I'm particularly fond of because it combines numeric, it combines character representations of numbers. Now, one thing that you could do with this, and I don't know that this would be the most secure, say you take your birth year, you could put that in as a passphrase. So say you were born in 1980, you could have it be 1980 with the 8 being a digit and then say your birth month have that be a 02 at the end if you know you're born in February of 1980. That's a good way of coming up with a password and then you remember it but how do you type that in you know if you're typing that in and you get all those stupid asterisks like this that's really hard to keep track of where you are in the phrase type it in in the username field. The asterisks are a throwback to when we would type in our username and password and we didn't actually have a screen like, like we're looking at. What happened is you typed in your password and it printed out on a piece of paper. So what would happen, so you know the next person that came up to the printer couldn't look at your output and get your password, they would print out a row of asterisks and then print your password over that. That's what this is. This is a throwback to that and it's it's really only good if somebody's right behind you looking at what you're typing or if you know you're connected to a projector and you're typing it there, then then you want to be more careful. But if you, you know, if you want to use a long password, type it into the username field, copy and paste it into the password field and you're okay. But clear your clipboard. You know, once you've done that, type something else and copy that so it's not in the clipboard anymore. And that makes using these so, 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 so much easier. And that comes up to password managers. Because even once you've come up with an amazing password like, you know, nine Oscars peeled quartz, you don't want to use that everywhere. So that's where password managers come in. Um, some that I know that I've used are one password and I use LastPass. Now unfortunately for all of the features these aren't free. Uh, they have, I know LastPass has a free version and one password, I don't know if it does. But they do a great job of both generating passwords and saving passwords so that way you only need one good passphrase to get into the password manager and then from there it will remember all the rest of them for you there's also keychain if you're using a mac that is also very powerful and very useful and i believe with this latest update it is available in the cloud as it were also that way you can use passwords like this monster without actually having to remember it because this is a phenomenally secure password not only is it very long but it uses uh in the entire range of characters possible from special characters to numbers to everything so the just the space that this occupies is tremendous this password would take you know 700 years to crack 
and it's very secure but you're never going to remember it that's why you would use a password manager because it would generate a password that looked like this monstrosity and that way you know that's that's just going to be safe period maybe probably so how do you get these passwords it's like wow dangerous is this like are they going to google and just typing in a username and every possible password no because most websites and most institutions have mechanisms in place to prevent that from happening what usually happens is a hacker will get a hold of a database uh, something like you may have seen reports of this happening it happened to adobe pretty recently last few weeks where it'll say hey your adobe live account has been Cry, uh, the you know your Adobe Live account may have been compromised. Go change your password. Now that might also be a phishing attack, but we'll get to that in another video. So basically, you have a database, you have all this information, but it's encrypted. So how do you crack the encryption? Basically, you can you can look at it, and by the nature of the encrypted data, you can sort of tell how it's been encrypted. So then you do these brute force attacks, where you just keep trying these different types of passwords on it until you have one that matches the encryption. So if they used, and I don't want to get into encryption types, so we may talk about that later. But let's say they used uh, AES-256 encryption on it. Basically, what the hacker would do is then they would generate a password encrypt it and see if it matched what was in the database and as soon as they do boom they're done those are where something called assault comes in and this is something that a lot of modern companies are doing where when they store your password they add some gibberish to the beginning or the end of it so that then the password is salted and it's much 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 harder to break and the way this works is you supply a password and they run it through this it's a one-way encryption they run it through this same algorithm to add the salt to it and then encrypt it and that's what they use to check and see if you entered the right password a lot of information uh, it's just good to know so in summary don't use the same password for every site that is a very 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 bad idea because if you use you know i like cat 7 and that gets hacked and you know that's the same password you use for your gmail account your facebook account your pinterest account then you're you're out of luck uh, get a password manager i think this is very important i used to um i used to sort of poo poo the idea of using a password manager because i kept all my passwords in my head uh now my passwords have gotten longer i have more sites i log into so i use a password manager it's more important for things when you know you're going to a site you haven't been to in six months and you're like i don't remember what my password was um use passphrases that's also very important um, because the longer your password is the harder it is to break and to that end use the username box to type it in just remember to clear your clipboard right and that should about do it